Uhuru. Brothers and sisters and comrades, this is Amali Chatel. I'm chairman of the African People's Socialist Party. And I am leader of the Uhuru movement and the International African Revolution. I want to thank you for coming on to this abruptly called pop-up. But you know that we had to make some kind of statement now. And what we're looking at is in Buffalo, New York, which is the second largest city in New York. It's the latest scene of the overt and murderous uh, non-state directed or initiated violence anywhere against African people in this country. <laughs> and this is where on Saturday, just two days ago, an 18 year old white man gunned down 13 people, 11 of whom were Africans, 10 of whom all Africans died. The response to this murder was predictable, was standard. An immediate cover up of the basis of the mass murder by the US colonial capitalist state and a defense of the colonial capitalist system by a diverse sector of its beneficiaries. And this defense includes the beneficiary Benjamin Crump, who is an African lawyer, who hits the lottery with each notorious white nationalist murder of our people, and who can be counted on to deflect attention from the system itself and onto specific individuals who according to the Trump logic, irrationally acts with hatred quotes in their hearts to undermine what they characterize as the value of America or the American system. The defense includes the aptly named Byron Brown, Buffalo's first African mayor who bemoaned the fact that Killer Peyton Gendron, or Gendron, uh, this white, in quote, stranger who does not, as uh, Brown, Mayor Brown uh, stated, uh, know this community, uh, would come to Buffalo to disrupt the prevailing tranquility of the otherwise sanguine existence of the city. Of course, upon examination, neither Crump nor Brown makes any sense. According to Crump, who usually makes his dramatic appearances with the ambulance chasing Reverend Al Sharpton, the guilty verdict of the police murderers of George Floyd was supposed to have ended the unjust killing of our people. The guilty verdict, according to Crump and and Sharpton was America's last chance to live up to its creed of justice and equality for all. This is what they were saying. They got on their knees and they prayed and they asked you to pray with them as they had this discussion. But apparently 18 year old Peyton Gendrum or Gendrum didn't get the message or more like, likely he didn't give a damn about the Crump Sharpton message. As for Mayor Brown, we asked this question uh, based on Brown's statement that somehow this person, this 18 year old white man was from out of town. He didn't live uh, uh, in Buffalo. Uh, he was somebody who came and disrupted the peace. We, we asked him, we asked him the question of when has a 200 mile trip ever prevented white murderers from killing us or other colonized people. How, how far do Europeans have to travel from England, France, Italy, Germany, et al. to arrive uh, at this territory where they have, that they have named America to begin the massive murderous assault on the indigenous people here? How, how far do they have to travel? Brown, you're saying that somehow that this, this guy was an outlier. Uh, that, that Buffalo is not like this. The white people in Buffalo wouldn't have done this. This is somebody uh, from out of town. And if Europeans could travel from Manchester in England or Antwerp and Amsterdam in Holland to murder and enslave us in Africa, is it really a stretch 
for a single white man to travel the paltry 200 miles from Conklin, New York to kill Africans in Buffalo? Crump and Brown, like so many others, are busy deflecting attention from the ultimate culprit here. It is a social system that was constructed on our enslavement and the colonial domination of Africa, Africans, and colonized peoples of the world. There is nothing new here. This is tradition. This is an absolute necessity for the system itself because nobody, Africans included, would voluntarily live in a situation where you have foreigners and aliens, that's what you call colonizers, who will suck the blood, suck the resources, suck the future of our children without ongoing permanent violence. So Crump and Brown, like so many others, are deflecting, are deflecting attention from this ultimate culprit. And then just today, US President Joe Biden, after expressing his sadness over the murder, over these murders, and, and stating his plan to visit the African community of Buffalo on Tuesday, even as he's talking about doing this, they announced a plan for you, the United States to send hundreds of US troops to Somalia in East Africa to kill Africans there. And of course, this is possible because the ongoing US murders of Russia, of Russians and Ukrainians is happening surreptitiously without the overt participation of United States troops. This is what we're looking at. And then of course you have, uh, 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 speaking of the Buffalo murders, Biden made his own contribution to the Crump Brown obfuscation declaring, quote, we must all work together to address the hate that remains a stain on the soul of America, unquote. This is Biden's statement. And of course, this is something that may have, had, may have been effective a few years ago or even a few months ago. But today, most of us understand that countries do not have souls. They have governments that function within social systems that they protect. Souls cannot be overturned, but social systems can be overturned. And if the social system the way in which the society produces the necessities of life is parasitic. A social system that consists of foreigners and aliens living off the sweat and resources of others, it cannot maintain its existence except through extreme violence by the parasite for eternal compliance from the host upon which it relies for its existence. And I think it's really important for us to understand this because Crump, when he's crying about and bemoaning what has just happened in Buffalo, is saying to Biden and to the US government, you gotta pass this anti-hate and this anti -hate legislation to prevent this kind of thing from happening. But when has legislation ever stopped this from happening? When has law ever been separate from the wishes and will of a ruling class. And especially when that ruling class is one that is rooted in a colonial mode of production. When will you ever expect this law to benefit African people? There was a constitution of the United States. Law is already here that supposedly guarantees equal protection for all, but it doesn't do that because what the law does is it reinforces a mode of production. This is how a society produces everything that it needs to exist. And it produces also a mode of life. And the ideas, the philosophy that you find in a society stem from the mode of production. And this is a parasitic mode of production that we are talking about. And this is not hard to believe. And yes, I keep talking about it and I'm gonna keep talking about it because it's important for us to understand because Crump and others would have us believe that the problem that we're having with in this country is something that just started. They don't even tell us how we got to this country. They don't even say how a whole social system was based on an attack on Africa and other peoples around the world, how all the wealth that is concentrated in the white world comes from what they've done to 
to Africa, Africans, and to colonized peoples around the world. Even when we look at this land, white people are not indigenous to this country. It is colonialism, the attack on the indigenous people that brought these resources and a way of life known as the American way of life here. And it is not something that was simply restricted to the United States. The whole world is connected together in a single economy. And this single economy has come into existence through slavery, the attack on Africa. And from this attack on Africa that happened some 600 years ago, this is the struggle we've been involved in, didn't just start uh, at some, some, some uh, store uh, right there in Buffalo, it's a struggle that began some 600 years ago when Portugal initiated the transatlantic trade in black bodies among Europeans, transferring us to various places in the world, including what we now refer to as the United States of America. So this is a social system and it embraces the whole globe, the whole world. That's why Biden can be talking about sending troops to Somalia. That's why France right now is engaged in murdering black people all over Africa. That's why Haiti is in the condition that is in now and how Africans got to Haiti in the first place. Just like you and I got to what we call America in the various places we are located as a consequence of a colonial mode of production. And that is what killed these Africans on Saturday in Buffalo. And I think it's really important because every time you see something like this, you get a lot of soul searching. It comes from various liberals. It comes from the media who now investigate and guess what they've discovered? They've discovered that, that, that uh, in Buffalo, the section East Buffalo where 80% of the people are more are African people, uh, this, this store uh, that we're talking about uh, where where this white man came in after having researched it, located it, this store that he came in to kill people, uh, now that it's shut down, there's no store in the community. And the fact is they like to refer to this as a food desert. Well, who put the food desert there? Did Peyton, the 18 year old white man murderer, put the food desert there? How many black people have died there because there is no quality food there, because the economy of our community has been something that has not been allowed to, to, to develop the way it should develop. This, this, this is murder that we are talking about. And the same white man that Crump is asking to get legislation about hate law is the white man that developed, that put in place the so-called anti-crime bill that's responsible for killing all the black people that, that Crump and Sharpton make a lot of money from and get a lot of notoriety from uh, defending. It's like this uh, quality relationship that they have with the Biden and the US government because they, the government kills them and then Crump and Sharpton rushes in and tell black people, don't get upset, don't get angry, uh, but and we pray really hard and we're gonna make them stop doing it. We're gonna get some more laws passed like the constitution didn't work. None of the other laws work. Now, this is what we have been told and that takes us off the point. And the point is of course that black people all around the world along with the vast majority of other peoples around the world live under a colonial mode of production. But the colonizer feeds his children through taking resources from us. You look at a situation, I think the place was Quick Trip 2014 that they accused Mike Brown of having stole some cigars. I think there was a, a, a market uh, where, where George Floyd uh, had a confrontation that was the basis of them killing him. All these little entities in our communities are there because of starvation of our community because there are no resources circulating in our communities because we don't have any kind of independent economic life, notwithstanding what Mayor Bage, I mean Brown, says about this issue. Crump won't deal with that. They just put the supermarket there just the other day, just a, 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 a recently. Before that, there was nothing. So you have, and then what the liberals and people like Crump and people like, like, like Brown, the mayor there, 
They tell us that what we need uh, for is economic development, but for them, economic development really means capital extraction. It means bringing uh, some white man's store, some colonizer's shop into our community to make it easier for us to get money to them. It doesn't mean that any kind of development that would, would, would negate the colonial colonizer from coming in and taking our resources. We still don't have any resources, they just make it easier for us to give the resources to the colonizers. That's what they call economic development. That ain't economic development, that's colonial capitalist extraction. But this is what we have all around the country. And you could just point to just a few of the incidents that we are talking about uh, where murder has happened. And you can see many of them were centered uh, around these shops that they put in our community to bleed our community. When I say they put them there to bleed them, I mean that they are external forces who dropped in our community and they claim they're doing us a favor because if it weren't for me, you wouldn't have any store. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be in the shape that we're in. We'd have our own store. We have our own economic development. That's the violence that's committed against African people every day. They say that in this country, uh, and in, in Baltimore, I think they said that the, 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 the African lifespan is something like five years less than, than, than white people in Baltimore. And I'm sorry, in Buffalo. I don't think that's true. I think it's larger than that. But, 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 but Peyton didn't do this. The white gunman, the white reactionary gunman didn't do this. This is a natural relationship that we have under colonialism. We live less. They take our life. They extract all kinds of value from us, including life itself. There is no solution to our contradiction, our problem, by trying to get the colonizers to act more effectively, to be beneficent in its relationship to us. Colonialism by its very nature is parasitic. It's a parasite. It is when capitalism came to existence, it came into existence through this parasite that had infested all of the world and especially Africa, connect us into a single economy and sucks the blood. And all the resources coming from Africa, coming from what they call South America, coming from Asia, uh, et cetera, much of it coming, uh, comes as a consequence of this parasitic relationship. That's what colonialism is. That's what the colonial mode of production is. That's the thing that we have to fight against. And I'm not saying that because I say this, that tomorrow we're gonna to be better off, but what I am saying is that we have to have the long view. And when we look at what happened in Buffalo, we have to ask the question just as we did uh, when it came to what happened to George Floyd, just as we did with Mike Brown, just as we've done with every murderer, to what end? You just demonstrate, 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 protest, protest. You, we still are not in better shape today than we were before this thing happened. And in some instances, we're in worse shape than before it happened. And the other thing I want to say is this, it's not just us. When we talk about a colonial mode of production, we talk about all of Europe and what they characterize as North America, living off the blood, the, the sweat, uh, and, and the lives of, uh, of uh, colonized people. Uh, yesterday, they just experienced what they call Nakba. This is Palestinians who, uh, uh, in, in, in 47 years ago, 1947, 1948, with the assistance of all the colonial powers, these colonizers from Europe uh, came from Europe and went into Palestine and took Palestine, changed the name from Palestine to Israel call themselves Israelis and act like they always been there. And the people are dying there and they kill Palestinians in broad daylight. The people are demonstrating today in Palestine because of murder by these European uh, who came and took their land because colonialism acts that way. It can't act any other way. They kill us everywhere we are. And sometimes it's direct and sometimes they use white power in a black face to kill us. So Obama was white power in black face. You think Obama represented you? The African People's Socialist Party has done more in two or three short years in, 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 in North St. Louis in terms of developing this community, bringing economic development to this community uh, than Obama did for black people here or any place else for the eight years that he was in power. He acted as a cover for white power, just like Trump and just like Brown. What you have to do is join the revolution. That means become a part of a movement to take back our freedom. That means we come to a place where we refuse to live with the kind of humiliation and murder 
the extraction of value in life, the theft of the dreams of our children on a regular basis. That means that we get off our knees and stop this situation of begging white folks, please don't kill us anymore. Begging the same people who put us in this situation to take us out of this situation. That means that we choose our friends better. Somebody's not our friend just because they say something like Black Lives Matter. What does that mean? How does that change anything in the world? Zuckerberg and Facebook helped to give us a Black Lives Matter thing so that you don't have a program. It's not even a criticism of the social system itself. It's a declaration of what should be recognized by anybody if it were true. But the fact is it does not matter. Black life does not matter under colonialism. Black power is what matters. And that's what we have to fight for. That's what we have to demand. It doesn't mean you get this overnight. It doesn't mean that things will change overnight in Baltimore or in Buffalo or any other place that we live. But it means that we have the long view. And of course, everybody won't do it because people are hungry. People want to eat now. I know that. I know that. And that's the kind of thing that opportunists use to trick the people and to dumb down the people because you got good ideas, but how are you going to do it now? The fact is, we're not talking about doing it now. We've been talking about doing it for 400 years, 600 years. And it hasn't happened, and it can happen until we begin to concentrate on what the real contradiction is. Marcus Garvey did. That's how in 1920, Marcus Garvey created steamship lines, a black steamship line for black people. We haven't had one since that time. That was more than 100 years ago. That's why he was building factories. He was saying Africa for Africans at home and abroad. He was talking about how do we construct our own independent capacity to make life for ourselves and stop making life for somebody else. That's like we would do under colonialism. So what's being promoted now? is real told, and this functions more as an excuse than anything else, part of the same kind of line, that this young man, uh, Peyton, uh, is somebody who was, uh, had been radicalized uh, uh, online, and that he had become a victim of uh, this uh, replacement theory, this extremist theory called replacement theory. And we are told, uh, and, and there's no real discussion about replacement theory, except it's crazy, it's extreme, uh, it's et cetera. And it is based on the assumption uh, in the political world that uh, white people are being replaced in critical areas, politically, economically, in other places, uh, by Africans and other people. They say, this is what, what Peyton Gendron was motivated by. They say he wrote something like a 180 page uh, document that talks about his and how he's embraced this uh, replacement theory. And then uh, what we've been reading lately is that uh, uh, this replacement theory is something that uh, is being promoted, especially by Fox News uh, pundits. And there's some other pundits who they call right wing, and sometimes they call them extreme white ring, wing, ring right-wingers uh, who are promoting this notion of replacement theory. And when they talk about replacement theory, uh, they are talking about how uh, uh, the, the, the Biden and the Democratic Party was encouraging uh, uh, immigration, immigrants to come to, to the United States. Uh, and uh, that would change the racial mix uh, in the United States to reduce the political power of white people. And uh, uh, this is a line, they're talking about uh, uh, this here, and this is a line that was also put forth uh, in 2019, when a white man uh, in New Zealand uh, uh, killed 51 people in mosque. And how, and then in, 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 in two, uh, and, and we saw 23, what they characterized as mostly Hispanic uh, shoppers killed uh, in El Paso and which are talking about Mexicans primarily. Again, we're talking about colonized people who are being killed and who are being pushed out of the countries into these uh, places that's dominated by white people. And the guy in New Zealand, like the guy in the United States, does not. they don't start off saying that we are killed and replaced uh, the African people in New Zealand. 
They don't start off in saying that the, the numbers of millions of uh, so indigenous people that they call America, uh, call Indians, uh, were killed in the United States, and that so many of them in concentration camps today. Somehow, somehow, uh, New Zealand is has become a, a, a place that's normal for white people to be. This place that we call America is normal for white people to do be. They replace everybody. It killed people and took their land, took their resources, and they've been killing around the world. Uh, but the fact is, it has not just been. It has just not been a replacement theory that's a relatively new phenomenon. As, as I mentioned, by 2000, in 100 years from 2014, uh, 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 15, 2016, 50 million indigenous people in the Americas were killed by these people. This was, this was uh, uh, the, the replacement theory here is that they were replacing the indigenous people. They kill us in Africa, they're replacing us there. They took uh, uh, parts of Africa, continue to control parts of Africa today. And yet uh, we have to believe that this, this is an anomaly, this 18 year old white guy who ran into what they characterize as replacement theory. Is that what motivated Supreme Court? Is it real? Is there an issue that's not being spoken to or uh, that they would prefer not to have on the table about the fact that white women are not having enough babies to even maintain the stability of the population, not only in the United States, but much of the world. And that is a, a real crisis that informs a lot of the political actions and political activity uh, that's occurring in the white world. This is something that's being written about for a while now, even uh, uh, people who they might characterize as right wing, but have been in American governments, have operated in the, in the uh, cabinets of, of US presidents have talked about this, that there are not enough babies uh, being born that are white to even maintain the, the, the population status of white people. And yes, the Supreme Court uh, just made a ruling on abortion that would, would, would open up, that would uh, shut down the capacity for abortion because they want white women to keep having babies. That's why they would bomb abortion clinics. And that's why they will shoot abortion doctors. This replacement theory is not just some myth, not just some crazy white people. The fact is that something is happening in the world and the colonizer is being reduced. And it's not just being reduced physically, although that is something that's happening too, but philosophically around the world, people are moving away from colonial understanding of the world, colonial inter interpretation of the world. Politically, people are moving to break free from colonialism. That's what Afghanistan is about. That's what Syria is about. That's what people are struggling against in Venezuela and other places to break free. That's why the French are being pushed out of Mali in West Africa today. People are breaking free and they are telling the colonizers we will replace you, you will be replaced. And this is the real crisis of the social system today. And it's not a crisis that's, that's somehow locked into Fox uh, uh, TV. Look at this. When in the last two presidential elections, white people, 57% of the white people in the United States voted for Trump. 57% of the white people, <laughs> the Democratic Party, was able to have a place uh, today as president in the presidency uh, precisely because they have because they rely on Africans, they rely on colonized people to participate in this electoral process to keep them uh, at the helm of the colonial uh, situation, a colonial country. Uh, that's why they're there. That's real. You don't have to be some crazy person who uh, is tied to right wing white politics to understand this. The fact is that the left wing and the right wing are all colonizers of where African people are concerned. And we do not get out of the situation by uniting with one set of colonizers uh, versus the other set of colonizers. We set our own course. That means that we have to destroy the colonial mode of production. That's the thing that's got us locked uh, in this horrible situation where life uh, is always uh, uh, something that is that is uh, threatened on every instance, every aspect of our life, every dream, every hope, every aspiration that our people have. Uh, all of these are locked uh, uh, within the colonial mode of production. We can't even see the world. We can't dream. Uh, that's the kind of thing that you and I have to break through 
And that's why we can't tolerate uh, opportunists uh, like Mayor Brown, who's apologizing for, uh, for, for Buffalo. Buffalo is not just some abstract city. Buffalo is a city that's controlled by colonial white power, uh, just like uh, New Zealand is controlled by colonial white power, just like the world is today controlled by colonial white power. And this is the thing that the peoples of the world are trying to break out of. That's why the majority of the people of the world will not unite with the colonial powers and their attack on Russia using Ukraine as a vehicle to do that. That's why African people are saying, are you crazy? Somehow I'm supposed to believe that Russia is the boogeyman and somehow England that brought slavery is this good guy and the United States is the good guy where they're killing people uh, uh, for sport uh, at, at, at shopping uh, centers and, and churches on a regular basis that's killing people, African people uh, in places like Somalia and other places all around the world. France is doing that on a regular basis, looting Africa right now. Huh. It's not gonna be like that. The fact of the matter is that those people who are afraid of being replaced, they are absolutely accurate. Colonialism is going to be replaced. The colonizer is going to be replaced. That's what we're organizing for. We will replace you. We will replace you. The oppressed have to replace you in order to live ourselves. You have sucked the blood and the resources uh, from Africa and colonized people forever. Part of what we are doing, and we want you to join with us, we have several kinds of projects that's created to feed, clothe, and house our people. Some of them in the United States, they function right now on the Black Power Blueprint, where we are actually creating a capacity to destroy the food desert that would make this uh, top friendly market necessary in a place like Buffalo. Uh, some of it has to do with creating centers to deal with African women's health and doulas so that our children can be born safely and so that more African women uh, can be trained how uh, to bring that into existence the way we used to do as an African people. Some of what we are talking about is organizing throughout the African world. We are sponsoring African Liberation Day in eight different places around the world. This is the African People's Socialist Party, one in South Africa, one uh, in Ghana, one in Sierra Leone, one uh, in France, one in England, one in the Midwest United States uh, happening in St. Louis, one in the Southern United States happening in St. Petersburg, Florida, one uh, in the Northern United States happening uh, in, in uh, Philadelphia, one in the Western part of the United States happening in Oakland, California. We're not just doing this to celebrate and sing songs and beat drums and what have you. We are pulling people together to be organized so that we can destroy the colonial mode of production, so that we can find a way to live, so that we can have the capacity to create life for ourselves so that we don't have to worry about strange 18 year old or 80 year old white people colonizers coming into our communities to attack us. African Liberation Day, you should go to ALD Uhuru, ALD Uhuru, that's U-H-U-R-U dot org. And you'll be able to find out about these African Liberation Day mobilizations happening, organiz organizing happening in various regions of the world and you can find a way to connect with them. In some instances, you may want to go to these places. In every instance, every instance, you should want to be organized to be a part of a movement that is working to destroy the colonial mode of production and will not be satisfied with simply apologizing for a system that can do nothing but murder us and that must do it as a condition for its own existence. So I want to just say thank you for, for being with me for these uh, few short minutes. We have a lot of work to do and apologizing for this system, begging this system to treat us better, trying to find a method of survival within the system without at the same time struggling to destroy the system won't work for us. We have to tell those colonizers that they are right or show the colonizers that they are right, show ourselves that they are right that they will be replaced. We will replace you. Thank you. Uhuru is related to Africa.